Hello everybody, can everybody hear me? So, welcome. Welcome to join us tonight at our live Q&A. Um, so, I think this is a great idea that we can sit in, we can be sitting in the comfort of our own home to talk about fertility and talk about gynecological conditions. Um, so I want to make this fun, interactive, and also informative for you. So ask me as many questions as you want. And I will try my best to go through all the questions for you. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, let me introduce myself. Um, I am, hello, hello Rainbow. <laughs> so, um, so I'm Karen Cole. I am a fertility specialist at IVF Australia. Um, so obviously my interest is helping people have babies, but in addition to that, I'm also a specialist gynecologist and specialize in performing keyhole surgeries to help people have babies, improving the fertility. So in fact, I'm the one of, I mean, I'm the only um, specialist in Australia that has gone through two fellowship training. One is our broad um, certified qualification in infertility. So that's called CREI. There's around 70 of us in Australia and New Zealand. And my, obviously my other interest in gynecological condition and surgery. So that's a fellowship in ages. So these two fellowships have made me mm, a very good doctor to look after you in terms of gynecological problems that can affect your fertility and performing surgeries for you. So. This is um, my interest and this is my passion. And so tonight is all about answering your questions. Um, obviously everyone's circumstances is different. And if you have any, if you want to come and have a chat to me with your unique circumstance, um, I see patients in the city, city, uh, Sydney CBD, in Alexandria, Cochra and Burwood. So um, fire away with your questions. So I can already see a question. So Catherine, thank you for your question. So Catherine is asking us, asking me, uh, hi, Dr. Kong, how much does laparoscopy to remove superficial endometriosis improve IVF success rate and frozen embryos transfer rates? I have had a look at the consensus statement from ASAP 2012. Are there any more good quality studies, RCTs, let me, and meta-analysis since 2012? Thank you. Wow, Catherine, you're very knowledgeable. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I mean, it is always difficult to run uh, clinical trials in surgeries. The reason being is that you to run a really good studies, you have to have um, control groups. What we mean by control groups is that people are blind, meaning they don't know if they're having the treatment or not. So it's a placebo effect or is it a real effect? So um, it is difficult to run this trial. So as far as I know, there haven't been major changes in the level of evidence. We know that um, doing surgery is for to remove endometriosis. So endometriosis is, let me go into a little bit of what is endometriosis. Endometriosis is when the lining of the uterus is in the wrong spot. So instead of being inside the uterus, it's outside the uterus. So it can be on the ovaries, can be in the tubes, and can be at the back of the uterus. So the problem with that is uh, the ovary talks to the lining of the uterus to say, thicken up now in preparation for a baby to implant inside the uterus. But those little dots of endometriosis also listen to the ovaries and say, okay, we'll, we'll bleed, we'll cause inflammation in the pelvis. And what happens is that it can affect people's, um, women's fertility because this inflammatory environment is not great for the sperm, it's not great for the embryo. So the different level, different severity of endometriosis. You can be very little, little dots, mild. You can be moderate, a little bit more, or very severe. And we know that from Current evidence is that when there is 
very minimal to mild endometriosis, so a little bit of endometriosis by doing laparoscopic surgery to remove this endometriosis actually improves the chance of even your own natural conception rate. But very severe endometriosis, the evidence is not so clear in terms of improving fertility. So for the patients that who are not having so much pain, symptoms, or more just a fertility, not just, but you know, for fertility um, issues, they are better off having IVF treatment straight away. But mild endometriosis, if all factors considered being fine, um, surgery may help them to conceive naturally. So that was a great question, but nothing much has changed since the last time we, we do the exit guidelines. So hope that answer your questions, Catherine. Um, I will say, let me look at the next question. So Julie asked me, how long after laparoscopy can endo reoccur? That is a good question. That is another <laughs> very good question. And uh, I mean, during my years of being a specialist in surgery, I, I can recall there are patients that will have endometriosis come back within the year. Um, but the problem is that endometriosis are little dots in, in the pelvis and you can't actually see them unless you do another surgery. So we can't actually put, through, put women through another surgery just to check if endometriosis has occurred again. But I recall one of my patients that who had endometriosis occurred really quickly. So as almost a blanket rule for every patient that I do perform surgery for endometriosis, I would suggest after the surgery, the two options. One option is to fall pregnant, try to fall pregnant straight away. The other option is to um, be on some forms of hormone therapy, meaning uh, an intrauterine device with uh, progesterone, which is a hormone to keep endometriosis under control, or using the oral contraceptive pill, which means that the ovaries are not producing hormones to stimulate the endometriosis that uh, could be still there that we cannot see because they are so tiny. Um, I don't, so yeah, so that you know, no one actually knows the answer how quickly does it come back, but I always make that point of after you do the surgery. We do the surgery for you, you have to either try to have a baby or be on some form of hormone treatment to keep everything under control and not let that hard work of surgery go to waste. So that hope I answer your question, Julie. I have got a question from Alicia. Alicia say, with a nodule that is fused my bladder and uterus together stop me from getting pregnant? It was fine when I had surgery, they are also fine stage four endo. Okay. So for for all of us, for our learning, stage four endometriosis means that that is the most severe form of endometriosis. So endometriosis um, um, what happens your body is trying to protect you when there's endometriosis in the pelvis, then your body say, well, hang on, this endometriosis are not supposed to be there. And what are we going to do? Let's get rid of it. And in that process, they can cause surrounding damage. And what happens, everything get all sticky together, what we call adhesions. Stage 4 endometriosis means very severe endometriosis that sometimes can be bladder sticking on the um, um, uterus, like in Alicia's case. and Perhaps you know the bowel can be sticking to the back of the uterus, so it is it is it is not good. Um, so I don't think the specific location of the endometriosis um, uh, affects fertility. So I'm not saying that you know the bowel. We we know that bowel endometriosis probably doesn't affect um, uh, fertility as much as other other places. Um, but, mm, you know, I mean, bladder endometriosis, if you don't have symptoms, um, meaning they can cause problems with painful uh, pain when you're passing urine, pain when you're opening your bowels. So the, the, the 
aim of the surgery, one is to improve your symptoms. So number one, do you have pain? Opening your bladder, opening your bowels, passing urine. Number two is your fertility. So it, I don't think bladder endometriosis itself as a specific cause of infertility. I think it's the whole process of inflammation making it a bit unfriendly for egg and sperm and embryos and affects the implantation of an embryo. Um, yeah, great questions. Great questions. Let me keep going through them. So the next question I have got is from Mel. Hello, Mel. So, hi, Dr. Kong. Will removing an endometrioma affect the response of someone who is already a poor responder to ovarian stimulation? What well, great questions. You guys are very knowledgeable in the um, topic of endometriosis. So, um, well, that is another question, another topic that the fertility specialists and the gynecologists who will, you know, have a debate over it. Do we remove the endometriomas? Do we do IVF first? So, you know, it's always a constant debate about it. Um, so, um, there's no simple answer to this. Let me have a think. Um, yes, okay, so an endometrioma means that the endometriosis is in the ovary. So what happened is that it grows bigger and bigger over time. And I have not uncommonly seen patients don't stimulate, like meaning if they're going through an IVF cycle, they're having injections to stimulate the ovaries to produce eggs. I have at times you know, seen that ovary with the endometrioma doesn't respond as well as the other ovary that has no endometrioma, okay? Um, the theory behind it is, is it affecting the quality because the, the environment is not nice for the egg? Um, no, no one knows, right? But, you know, it is a matter of fact that the endometrioma is there. Um, who would I remove an endometrioma for? I think, obviously, patients who didn't stimulate well uh, with in, with an IVF cycle, or patients that are having what we call a cyst accident, meaning they're having pain, uh, torsion of the ovary, or you know, very uncommon the endometrioma burst open. So those are the people that I say, well, you know, I I think we should operate on the ovary. I always do um, uh, a like an AMH, which is a hormone test. Um, to see what the ovarian reserve of that patient is for someone who have an endometrioma. If they have a very low ovarian reserve, I would say, look, I would say, let's go and get some, collect some eggs before we operate it on the ovary. Because when you're doing operation as careful as we do, is that you are, we, well, we can potentially damage the surrounding of the good ovarian tissue and those are the tissue that contains the egg so yeah it just puts you in a very difficult situation if someone has a very low ovarian reserve and we have to do a surgery on that ovary and we can potentially damage the eggs so it, it is a very um, individualized um, situation you know if someone who has a high ovarian reserve they have pain they're trying to fall pregnant i would say good let's remove the endometrioma to improve the environment of the ovary to have better quality eggs okay so next question okay rainbow your question is hi doc my last laparoscopic excision surgery was on July 15, 2017. How long till I need an other one again? I'm doing IVF cycle at the moment and also how to get diagnosis in the mitosis in the chest or lungs, if that makes sense. It seems that have, it seems, sorry, it's see more, one sec. It seems to have chest pain every month of my period. Ooh, 
um, that is very tricky endometriosis in the lungs. So the definition is when endometriosis is not endometrium, the lining of the uterus, not inside the uterus, is called endometriosis. So by definition, it can be in your pelvis, which is the most common spot for endometriosis. But yes, it can also be in the lungs. I have seen patients with endometriosis in their scar underneath the skin. So every month when they have period, they can have bleed, like little bleeding, they have pain underneath the skin. So it, it is possible, but rare. Um, so I don't think, Rainbow, I don't think you need another surgery before, obviously you're going through an IVF cycle at the moment, but obviously you can't, you're not doing surgery for you right now. But I guess it's, you know, up to the decision of your treating doctor to help you to say, look, if your IVF is successful, we can no, not think about having another surgery. We don't want to do surgeries for patients all the time. We don't want to do it two times, three times, you know. It is, it is not, it's not good. So if your IVF is successful, fantastic. We don't have to think about doing another surgery. Ultrasound doesn't really pick up endometriosis unless it's really bad. And I doubt that, you know, after 2000, like three years ago, you have a good surgery done. I doubt that they will come back that quickly. Um, I mean, e, you know, if, if the IVF cycle is not successful, then I think it's something that can be put forward to your treating doctor to say, look, you know, I want to have another look in, in the pelvis and I want to have a laparoscopy to make sure that, that there's no recurrence of endometriosis. Lung endometriosis is tricky. We can do... Well, we can, we can do x-ray, we can do scan, but how we can to remove it? It's very tricky. Um, yeah, so the, I, I think there are ways to, I mean, what we call medical treatment of endometriosis. You know, I would be pretty reluctant to operate, you know, to have someone to operate on my lungs to take out a dot of endometriosis. Um, skin, or underneath the skin, a, like underneath the scar, I can understand, but lung, I think, you know, probably out of my depth as well, <laughs> in, in the respiratory area. So, um, what I would suggest is to, when you finish having your baby, obviously when you are pregnant, your hormone levels straight and you shouldn't have endometriosis pain like straight line meaning they all at you know one straight line is of going up and down uh, to stimulate the endometriosis so when you're pregnant you should be fine after your pregnancy you, know, you can go on to all contraceptive pill to dampen down the um the hormone production so hopefully not to flay up those pain yeah so interesting rainbow um all the best for your ivf cycle so Joanna asking a question on Hi Dr. Kong, does adenomyosis affect fertility? Uh, yes, I have seen. So adenomyosis is another condition that is like a subset of endometriosis. So, oh, I've got my um, uterus here. I don't know if you can see it. This is my uterus that I thought, you know, I'll bring with me to do a QA and a because I think it's easier to visualize what endometriosis and adenomyosis is. Um, so this is a uterus and these are adenomyosis. So these are endometriosis on the side, because they're outside the uterus and they are adenomyosis. Oh, I can't see it backwards. <laughs> these are adenomyosis when they are inside the muscle layer. So adenomyosis is it is a very tricky condition to treat. It looks like little dots within the muscle uh, layer of the uterus, but it doesn't it doesn't light up. You know we can't go and operate on the uterus to take out little dots from within the lining, like the, the muscle of the uterus. So yes, it affects fertility. I have recently have patient of have a patient who have a lot of endometrial a lot of adenomyosis to the point that her uterus 
be 20 centimeters. It looks like she's 20 weeks pregnant, but, but she was not. So I don't know. That's what they call adenomyoma. So there are little dots, aggregates of endometriosis within the muscle. They're so hard to treat because they make the endometrius and, and the uterus really big, and they don't have a clear margin for us to remove it. Um, it can affect implantation of uh, the embryo. Uh, it can it can definitely affect fertility. Um, what's the best way of treating it? Um, um, various ways. Um, we do. We want is to have IVF cycle, but before that, we do what we call a long down regulation IVF cycle, meaning that we're giving a long one month, two months, a long. Um, treatment to dampen down the adenomyosis before going by there. So that's uh, yeah, that is a tricky condition to treat for sure. Um, okay, so Catherine um, asks um, Catherine asks us about the evidence on endometriosis from the very beginning. So Catherine said, thank you for your explanation. From what I have read, laparoscopy to remove superficial endometriosis doesn't improve success rate or IVF or FET much. Would you agree? Mm. Um, again, it goes back to uh, it is more the what the studies has tailored to test. Um, the studies so far has been saying that removing a little bit of endometriosis helps with spontaneous conception. Th that's what the um, study has shown. Um, you know, um, it is it is difficult when when someone has like you know, uh, I, I never say there's a real order of what you do. Do you do IVF treatment first or do you do a laparoscopy first? You know, there's no real order which way you do it. We have patient that says, uh, have you know, IVF cycle and they have not been successful so we should go back in to have a look to see do a laparoscopy to see if there's endometriosis to improve again is the environment of the pelvis um, so I mean in theory I think you, you are someone who has an IVF cycle hasn't been successful that is something that you should look into is are there endometriosis affecting the implantation of your embryo or success of your IVF? There are there are you could even do it the other way around to say, look, I want everything checked before I start my fertility treatment. I want to make sure that my pelvis is in top form. You know, if you have symptoms suggestive of endometriosis, if you have pain, if you have heavy bleeding. Yes, then yes. You no, know, that is probably also a reasonable um, way to start your treatment to have a family. So, no right answer, no great evidence, but so far that's what we we know. It improves your if it's a mild, minimal uh, endometriosis, removing it helps you with your natural fertility. So, I hope that helps. I know it's not very, you know, straightforward black and white answer. So, oh, Christine, thank you for your questions. Uh, the question is, do fibroids affect implantation? Fibroids is another um, passion of mine that I love. I mean, you know, they, they are common, but not the nicest condition that, you know, affects women's fertility. So fibroids and endometriosis and fibroids is another, it's such a common um, condition by the age of 50. I think 50% of us will have some sort of fibroids in our uterus. Um, the fibroids, it depends on where these fibroids are. So um, this is, I'll try to see if you see my uterus. <laughs> but this is like a fibroid, the one in the middle, like a muscle. Okay, so it's basically a muscle overgrowth. But fibroids can be anyway, they can be outside the uterus, they can be within the cavity of the uterus, or it could be in the middle, like the muscle layer of the uterus. So, the implantation occurs in 
the inside of the uterus, isn't it? So we know that if there are fibroids inside, in the like in the middle of the cavity where the embryo more should be implanting, I think it's a good reason to remove those fibroids, and that those are the fibroids who are almost the most problematic one, what we call submucosal fibroids within the uterus. So what it is, is that yes, people get very heavy bleeding. Uh, if the, also, if the embryo try to implant into the lining of the uterus, obviously you want the lining to be nice and smooth instead of implanting on the fibroid, isn't it? So yes, submucosal fibroid, meaning the ones inside the uterus, I think they have, they should be removed for fertility patients. The other ones are not so clear cut. So I mean the ones on the outside, so I'm talking about on top of the uterus, not even affecting the inside of the cavity. Those are the ones that are um, not so problematic. The one in the middle are the tricky one. So if they're big enough to push inside the uterus, in the, into the cavity of, cavity of the uterus, yes, I think they should be, held, be looked at. But from the outside, the one on the outside, no. The one on the inside, yes. The one in the middle, we've got to think about it. So, I hope that answered the question. So, Kate, the question is, is very painful pressure in the bladder that leads to the continuous feeling of needing to urination, which occurs for about a week or two most months? a symptom of endometriosis. I have my first IVF appointment next week and worry because I have had this problem for about two years and don't know what it might be. Okay. Um, yes, I think that is um, um, a fair chance. I mean, obviously common things happen commonly, you know, making sure that there's not like a urine tract infection, but you know, but the sound of it is that yes, it is related to your periods. And that is one of the questions that I ask my patient is say, look, when you have your periods or you know, around the time of your periods, do you have pain when you urinate? So I mean, there's almost something quite classic of um, endometriosis that could be you know, in the bladder, near the bladder. Uh, how do we treat it? Um, they obviously to diagnose this problem, it is a keyhole surgery. Okay, um, it can be removed. Okay, um, the um, if you are starting your IVF treatment, as I said, you know, if, uh, endometriosis responds to medical treatment, so giving you hormone therapy later on after you have completed your family hopefully should make the endometriosis a bit more calm and not causing you those symptoms. So it is something that should be looked at and the, your, um, the what I would do to look if you are my patient to do investigate your symptoms will be I'll do a laparoscopy to diagnose the endometriosis on the bladder and also we'll put a camera inside the bladder to see if there's endometriosis inside it. So um, yeah, not not pleasant but um, um, it is good idea to have a look if it is bothering you. Since it's been two years, that's a long time Kate. Um, okay. And Anna asks a question on, good evening, doctor, do you know much about fertility supplements such called Fertility Smart? Is it for men and women? Oh, okay. Anna, sorry, I don't really know about <laughs> fertility supplements uh, and what's in Fertility Smart, um, but I'm sure there will be, you know, the essential supplements like, you know, for women, folic acid for pre-pregnancy because that's one of the most important supplements that you need to um, have um, uh, prevent what we call neurotrip defect. Um, men, I mean, for, for men, um, have, um, you know, health, being healthy, don't smoke, um, more, like don't, don't train too much, uh, everything in moderation, good exercise. I think that's 
that's good. And usually the supplement contains um, antioxidants to help with the sperm health. Okay, so, okay, thank you. Um, okay, Catherine asked a question on, given removal of endometrioma could reduce AMH by doing damage, can egg retrieval do the same? Um, good question, very, very, um, very intelligent questions that you're asking. You guys have a lot of info, like ideas about endometriosis and fibroids. So uh, the answer is, I don't think so. Um, what it is a very different procedure for, endo for removal of endometrioma or egg collection. Egg collection, we use a tiny, 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 tiny needle to drain the fluid of the follicle. Um, and inside the follicle, there should contain an egg. So the damage is minimal. I don't, do not think doing uh, egg retrieval will damage someone's um, ov ovarian tissue. Uh, whereas endometrioma is, it is a bigger surgery. Um, and endometrioma used to be usually quite what we call adherent, so they're quite sticky. So it does take some work to carefully separating them and peel it off and a lot of the time they don't peel off very easily so in that process it's more damaging to the ovary than the actual egg, egg collection minimal okay so um this is fun i'm having fun um next question now ask me you mentioned that long down rack is usually to treat adrenal meiosis in an ivf cycle is it possible to dampen down adenomyosis in conjunction with a natural conception cycle? Okay, so when you are trying naturally, is that right? I mean, that is difficult. That is difficult. When you're trying naturally, you are, you need to produce your own hormones. Okay, so it means that I can give you medication to dampen down your ovary and if I do that, you don't actually produce an egg. So, yeah, it's tricky. So no, we can't, we can't really do that, but good thinking. Um, Christine. Yes, yes, the, the, egg, the egg retrieval needle is very small, correct. Okay, next question. Um, what are the, some of the reasons that a normal PGS embryo still don't implant and what can we do to increase the success of implantation? That's a, another hour of topic that we have to talk about, Rainbow. <laughs> so, um, uh, genetically normal embryo definitely increase your success rate, uh, a success, you know, pregnancy success. However, there's so many different factors in 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 the um in the environment so again we're talking about the environment endometriosis one of them um lining you know development of the um the, the lining to for this embryo good in embryo to implant um there are so many different factors is that do you have any problems with you know, your thyroid glands or do you have diabetes all those things affect implantation so Yes, those are, uh, there are a lot of reasons why they don't implant. Um, yeah. Um, so, Anisha asks, how do you prepare women before IVF? Okay. Um, so, we have, a, um, how do we prepare women before IVF? Obviously, you have to see one of us. Um, and we will have to assess the situation. So sometimes you don't even need IVF. You know, uh, it's about assessing your individual circumstance to see what is suitable for you. And before we prepare women for like go through fertility treatment, let's say we will have you already taken folic acid. We do blood tests to check your hormones. We do ultrasound to check the pelvis, making sure that your partner's sperm is good, and um, 
we will have our lovely nurses teach you how to do the injections yourself. Um, so yeah, I mean that is quite a bit of preparation, but you know, yeah, we have a great team that help us get through this IVF journey. Great. So. Uh, I suggest HSG procedure before IVF to all. Look, HSG. So for what HSG is, is a X-ray that the radiologist put dye inside the uterus, and the tubes have. If, if the tubes are patent, the dye flow through the tube. So it's an X-ray. Uh, the other option these days is what we call. Uh, an ultrasound option, so called hycosis. So fluid, same thing, fluid inside the uterus, flush through the tubes, and on the imaging we can see that the tubes are patent. If you are going uh, going through IVF, you probably don't you, you probably don't need to have a HSG because during IVF we collect eggs, we collect sperm, we put egg and sperm together to make embryos, and we transfer into the uterus. So the tubes are essentially not needed in an IVF procedure. So I don't, if someone's coming to see me and they need IVF, I don't usually get them to do, uh, I, I don't get them to do a tubal patency test. Um, great question so far. Very good. Everyone's so knowledge about, about, knowledgeable about the topic. Um, so, um, Next question. Okay, so what is the difference in symptoms between endometriosis and cyst, in particular relating to my monthly problem of bladder pressure and pain? Definitely not a UTI. <laughs> yes, that was just just a wild guess. Okay, sorry. Yes, I, I acknowledge that. I think that is more related to your cycles. So the um, differences in symptoms. Okay, endometriosis is more what we call cyclical. Okay, very typical having pain before there's your cycle, before your period starts, and starting to ease off at the first few days of your periods. And obviously, severity can be different. And if it's severe in the long run, they can become something called chronic pain. You know, you can have pain all the time, not even related to your periods. Um, so. It is very different. Uh, ovarian cysts, which could be any sort of cyst, it can be simple, it can be complex, it can be all these differences. What happens is that the ovary is mobile. Okay, so when you move your ovary, should be when you turn your body, your ovary moves. Okay, so when the ovary is heavy, if it has a cyst in it, the risk is it turn and twist and the risk of having what we call an ovarian torsion when the blood supply to the ovary is cut off. So it is very different. It's like cyst doesn't really have the same sort of, if it's not an endometrioma, you know, a cyst doesn't usually give you that cyclical pain. It gives you like a constant discomfort because it is constantly there. And the worst case scenario is, as I said, turning and twisting, so that would be an emergency um, that you have to go to the hospital straight away. So it's very different. Um, so yeah, great, great question. So um, I hope that everyone enjoy the live Q&A, um, and this is fun, um, I enjoy it too. Um, so if you have any questions, if you want to see me to have a chat, more than happy to see you. So thank you everybody for your time and thank you for joining me.